Well, here we go. Uh, your session with Casey Anderson on Earth Live Lessons. And today we're in the wilds of Montana. And with everything that's going on in the world right now, um, you know, self-isolation, not being able to get out, um, hoping that I can take you on a little ride through the nature of my backyard. And it's quite a wild place, actually. It's uh, a lot going on. So I'm just gonna give you a little bit of insight into wildlife tracking 101, uh, what I do every single day when I go out, try to look for stories as a wildlife filmmaker. Now, that's what I do for a living most of the time is I make wildlife films, but it's gotta start somewhere. And it starts just like this out in the wild, looking for tracks, looking for sign, looking for evidence left behind that tells a story. And then if I start to see a story unfold, I start to follow those little bits and clues. And uh, if something's awesome and I'm going to want to do a film about it, then I, I go from there. Um, so yeah, this Earth Live lesson, Casey Anderson, a uh, little background on me, kind of grew up in Montana. Um, my dad took me out, did a lot of this tracking stuff. So this is something that I'm doing every single day. I love it. That's all I know how to do. I couldn't do anything else. Uh, so here we go. Um, let's walk around. I don't know what we're going to find, but I'm just going to give you a little insight into tracking. And as I see things, you're going to be with me on this hike. Uh, no matter where you're at in the world, self-isolated, you're going to be in the wild with Casey Anderson on Earth Live Lessons right now. Here we go. So just to give you a little background where I'm at now, I'm uh, just north of Yellowstone National Park, um, maybe about a half an hour drive. This is, is the Yellowstone ecosystem in southwest Montana. And we're just going to walk around. And right off the top here, just, you know, when it comes to tracking, finding sign, um, you know, one thing that you look for are not only just tracks, but anything. And right here, you'll see we have some scat. Scat, or for the layman terms out there, that's poop. And uh, this is elk poop. So again, what I'm figuring out now is that there are elk here. So elk, big deer species, something that predators might want to eat. So that's a good sign. So if I'm looking for a predator, uh, go where the food is. If you want to know where the big animals are, you look for the animals that they eat and the little animals. And that's a very good first step when you're starting to go out and track and try to find things. And right over here, look at this. Check this out. So this is a remnants of a elk that had been killed and if, I look around here, I can tell that it's underneath this tree. It's obviously been drug over to this area. Um, the fact that it's been cached underneath a tree gives me a good indication that this was killed by a mountain lion. When mountain lions make a kill, what they do is they look for the nearest tree that they can drag the carcass over to feed on. And if they can hide it under the tree, scavengers like eagles and ravens and magpies, they can't. They can't see it, therefore cat doesn't have to share. And it looks like this cat probably spent a good portion of the time under this tree eating on this elk. Now this is probably over a year old. Uh, you can tell it's pretty white. All the bones are pretty white, no meat left. So that means that uh, this animal had been completely consumed. Probably some scavengers ate on it, but right off the top, this is a great sign that there's activity in this area. And I, I know this is a great spot. It's why we're out here. Um, there's always, always predators out here, always different species, things like mountain lions, grizzly bears, wolves, coyotes, uh, eagles, both bald and golden eagles, raccoons, skunks. I mean, everything lives out here. It is a very vibrant ecosystem. Let's take a little walk over here. And, uh, put you in uh, POV mode here so you can see where I'm going. I'm gonna hop this fence, not trespassing. Down by the creek. Going on to the creek's edge is a great spot to look for tracks in the mud and the snow. I don't see anything here. Keep moving. 
You know, and it's not just all visual. You know, sometimes you have to use your nose and smell. Sometimes you gotta just listen. You know, the birds will give alarm calls if they see a predator. Um, just keeping all your senses alive when you're out here trying to find these clues. Now look right here. This is uh, another old, old sign. See where the tree has been gnawed right here. So at some point there was a beaver who came along to this cottonwood tree and uh, chewed on it. But uh, again, quite old, but now I know beavers live in this area and uh, if beavers live in this area, there's likely animals that eat beavers. And actually it's one of the Mount Lion's favorite foods is a beaver. Your beavers can get to be 60 pounds. They're huge rodents, um, really awesome animals, really kind of keep this ecosystem alive by building their dams, flooding the areas, creating all kinds of habitat for waterfowl. Some tracks right here. Okay, we got something different here. So those are older tracks. These are left behind by a mule deer. So there are four species of deer that live in this area. We have mule deer, white-tailed deer, elk, and we have the big old moose that loves to eat these willows. You can see here where they've, moose have chewed the tips of this willow off. And again, it's all connected. The beaver comes along, makes his dam, floods the area, kind of farming these willow. The willows grow and uh, it, uh, yeah, it's just like a farm for moose and every, other things. And I just saw a question, how do I tell the difference between the ungulate tracks? Let's see, uh, if I can find some good tracks here to give you a good idea. Look right here. This, put my hand next to it so you get a kind of an idea of size. That's an elk track, you can tell by the size. But if you notice, there's right here, this elk has walked up this bank in the mud, left its hoof prints as it climbed going that direction. It's almost like an arrow. If you look at each side of the hoof, tapers that direction. So this is a pretty fresh elk track traveling in that direction. Now a deer track would be maybe two thirds that size and an elk track would be another third larger. So there's the answer to that question. Keep moving along here. There's all kinds of birds are flying around up in front of me. And I never know what I'm going to find out here. That's what's so cool. There's so many animals that call this place home. The fact that I'm blabbing so loud and it may deter some animals from being seen. They probably hear me coming, but uh, they'll, leave, they'll leave tracks behind. If there's something out here and it's alive, we got mud, we got snow. They'll leave, they'll leave tracks behind. Let's go over this way. A uh, question from Mark on Instagram. What is the best time, when's the best time to go tracking? Well, personally, I love the springtime because you have a lot of moisture, a lot of rain that creates mud. You also have the remnants of snow and both snow and mud. Um, well, dangerous here, hang on. I'll finish that question as I walk on thin ice. Um, <laughs> yeah, so you have that, that canvas, so to speak, of the, the snow and the mud to leave behind these prints. So that is the best time. Plus spring is the time all the young animals are being born and the parents of those animals are looking for food. It's just a very active time in the ecosystem. So honestly, right now is one of the greatest times. Oh, well, here's a great, great example. So here's a elk track, note the size again. But then if you come over here, this is a deer track. See it here, going that direction. And it's quite a bit smaller. So you can see the comparative between an elk and a deer. Two species, this is a really big crossing area you can see here. Lots of tracks on this ice actually. If you look. And it's very fresh elk tracks, a bunch of them. So there was a herd of elk in here last night. 
one thing I can do by looking at the snow is I have a pretty good idea of how to age a track based on what it looks like and how it's deteriorated over time. Uh, you know, one thing I like to do is, and I've done all my life, is like I'll go over to some snow just outside of my house after a fresh snow and I'll just literally go like this. Now I know that's what a very fresh track's gonna look like, right? I just made it. Now if I watch it over time, over days, I can see how that track falls apart. And uh, you, you can learn a lot by just kind of making your own tracks in the mud and the snow and watching them deteriorate and age over time to, to apply that as you go out and track. So the, just the question popped up there, what is the best way to learn how to track? And I'll tell you what, it's all about experience, just getting out here and just walking around looking. There's great books out there uh, you can use for references. Uh, lots of great apps and there's uh, you know groups on Facebook and Instagram that all about tracking where there's communities that share their knowledge. So taking that knowledge uh, and applying it to what your experiences are out in the wild, that's really the best way, you know, and hanging out with me right now on Earth Live Lessons. It's another great way. Little bits and pieces here, and you just got to go out and you got to just ex have that experience and uh, learn. Connect the dots. One thing I like to tell everybody when I'm teaching them how to track is, you know, when you find, oh, look at this. When you find something like this, look at this. So you can see there's some old tracks, pretty fresh deer track right there. And right there, see one, two, three, four toes and a pad. And right here, if you look at the front of the toes, there's no evidence. There's one right there too. No evidence of any toenails. Now any canine that would live in this area, whether that's a domestic dog, a wolf or a coyote, fox, when they walk, they leave little peck marks out from each toe where their, their nails are out constantly. Now the animal that has four toes and a track in this shape that does not leave claw marks are your cat species. And so your wild cat species in this area are mountain lion, bobcat, and lynx. And there are domestic cats, but look at the size. Nearly the size of that elk track. So that's not that old. You can see it's kind of wore out there. It's hard to say. I would say this is 24 hours old, maybe a little older, um, but that is a mountain lion. Another way you can tell is if you look at the pad, the back pad here, there's one, two, three little kind of lobes on the back and two in the front. And then here's one of my other little secrets. If you take a track like this, and you don't know if it's a canine track or a wild feline track, and you try to make an X in this void, the space between the toes and the pad, like this. See how this one, they intersect the toes on the inside of the top two toes here? If they intersect the toes, like this, it's a cat. Whereas a dog, the X will actually fit inside the toe void without touching anything. So this is definitely a mountain lion. So the question I just saw pop up is, can I try, track animals in the long grass? Well, it's a little more complicated as I walk here and see what this cat's doing. Um, but yeah, definitely. It's, uh, you know, you look at grass, Let's see if I can find a good example. Well, there's a kind of a great example off the top. Good question and some evidence right in front of me. So you see here, the grass standing up, but right there, see how the grass has been pushed in a, that direction? So something came through here, and you can see the tracks in the mud actually, and walked smashing this grass down in this direction and went on through that way across the creek and followed that big trail right there. Definitely an area where animals 
walk quite often across in that direction. That was uh, pretty fortunate. Good question off the top and uh, some, some evidence right in front of us. We'll look around some more here, see if we have any more surprises, any other questions. This is our hike, you and me. Come on, you can ask some questions. They're quiet questions, which is the best kind when you're out tracking animals. A lot of elk in this area. So this time of year, it's interesting because all the elk start to gather in these big groups. The males and females kind of separate. All the girls go and hang out because they know they're going to have calves here in about a month and a half. So they start coming down to these lower elevations and uh, find spots where they're going to raise their young. And the boys, they go up high up in the high country, up on the top of those mountains there and hang out. Oh, that's a good question. Signs of eating vegetation. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> oh, gosh, sometimes I think I'm lucky and I get a question. So the question was, can you show us signs of eating vegetation? And then I just turned to look and bingo. Now this is actually a cool one. See how the bark is stripped here? A lot of times you'll look at this and this is where an elk or a deer would have rubbed their antlers. Now, this case, it looks like it is a rubbing of an antler because you see how it's like peeled up and shredded like that. So the boys, when they're preparing to fight to mate in the autumn, they'll come over here and they'll look at this tree and go, well, this looks like a good practice spot. I can go over here and spar with this tree. I ain't gonna fight back too much. I can sharpen my antlers. I can practice my skills. And that's what's happened here is they've shredded this tree with their antlers. But if I look around a little bit more, I'll bet you they like to eat these uh, willows just like this. Yeah, here is a perfect example. So this is similar, but you'll see here where they've come in with their lower incisors and most deer species only have lower incisors and they come and they strip the bark with their lower teeth and rip it and eat this, eat this bark off in the winter time when the grass is dry. See some here too. And they don't have a whole lot to eat so they take advantage of eating the, the bark because it's uh, the only thing they've got when it's all snow covered here. And you can see they've really eaten this tree quite a bit. So there's your vegetation eating sign right there. Keep looking. Saw a few other questions pop up. Uh, anybody got any, any more questions? We walk around out here in the wild, live, Earth Lesson live session from the wilds of Montana. I'm gonna go over in the snow. Oh, look, there's another great, great thing here. Let's see. See that? This is some hair right here. This is white. Definitely, probably from the rear end of a mule deer. They have a white patch on their butt. This time of year, they are shedding their winter coat. But this also could be a piece of something that has been killed. <laughs> like this. Like this. <laughs> oh, I picked a good spot today. Yep. Carcass. That's the white hair piece of it we saw over there, that blew over or something grabbed it to make a nest or something over that direction. This is a dead, a dead mule deer. And I don't know why it's here. It's old also, but likely been killed by something. Let's see if we can find what would have done. There's tracks everywhere. Oh, look at this. Okay. This right here. This is a coyote. 
Now see the size difference compared to, put my handprint next to it here, compared to that mountain lion track. And then remember I told you about the X. You can almost visibly see the X within the track. Let's see if I can find a piece of, but yeah, if you just look here, you can see that straight line and there's a straight line like this. It creates a perfect X. Let's see if I can find a better track. These are older, these are, probably yeah there see that perfect x in the middle with the toes and the pad canine and the based on the size and probably it was over here scavenging off that carcass we just looked at that shows me that this is a coyote who's been scavenging on that deer carcass that we found by finding one little chunk of hair and then i looked around a little bit more and then it took me to the carcass and now i found the coyote track now a story start to unfold and this is what's amazing. It's like being able to find these stories out in the wild, to share them with everybody, including everybody here on Earth Live Lessons. It's how we fall in love with these animals. If you can't be out here walking around like me, you can still follow these stories, learn a lot, learn to fall in love with these animals, and in the end, hopefully protect them. That's what we need. So that's going to wrap it up. Um, I've got a lot of looking around to do. It's been a... This has been a great Earth, Earth Live lesson. Um, it's leading me to some more stories and uh, I'm gonna do some more tracking and see if I can find something and I'll keep you posted. This has been awesome. Thank you, for, thanks everybody for uh, hanging out with me out here. Earth Live lesson from the wilds of Montana with Casey Anderson.